Hey all, welcome to Alley Cat Customs for today. It's axle shaft upgrade time. I'm going to be replacing these wheat C clip style axle shafts with these heavy duty aftermarket axle shafts and C clip eliminators from Moser Engineering. So I've been upgrading this 10 bolt my C10 to better handle the abuse of drag racing and general street strip duties. And I've already installed the 410 axle ratio and have a locker already installed in it. Uh, so I'm able to get more of that big block power to the ground. So now that I got that installed, now it's time to install the uh, C-clip eliminators and a heavy duty axle shaft from Moser Engineering. So what a C-clip eliminator kit does is it basically just replaces the uh, style of retention for your axle shaft from the C-clip style or axle retention to a pressed on bearing style retention. So this is a C-clip style axle shaft and you can see the splines right here and then at the very tip of it is where the uh, C-clip rides and this is what a C-clip looks like. And when you slide this C-clip on here, that is the only thing that holds your axle shaft inside the housing of your axle on a 10 or a 12 bolt like with 10 these trucks. And uh, so if you break an axle shaft or if you grenade the carrier inside the housing and end up losing a C-clip or break an axle shaft, then the wheel and tire can slide right on out of the axle and it causes all kind of damage, uh, tear the fenders up on the truck, cause you, to, cause you to wreck the truck, just cause all kind of problems that just really isn't safe. So going to a C-clip eliminator setup is a whole lot safer, so I'm gonna show it to you right now. So this is my upgraded axle shaft with the C-clip eliminator kit already installed from Moser Engineering. And this axle shaft setup is gonna ensure that when I'm beating and bashing this truck and I'm racing at the drag strip or on the street somewhere, that if I happen to break a ring and pinion or break the carrier inside the housing, that I won't lose a wheel and tire and possibly crash the truck. So at least I better load it on a trailer and bring it back to the shop. So now that I've showed you the uh, factory style axle shafts and I've showed you the uh, upgraded style shaft from uh, Moser Engineering, now it's time to get on with the install. So uh, I'm about to dive in right now. So as you can see from all the mess, I had an axle shaft seal that was leaking. It was letting all the gear oil come out and get all over the brakes and stuff. I have new brake shoes to replace the, the, all the old raggedy brakes on here, but I got to pull the backing plate off as well as uh, pull the axle shaft seal and the axle shaft bearing that rides just inside the seal here. Got to pull all that out and I have to cut the uh, end of this axle housing in order to fit the uh, uh, C-clip limiter kit on. So I'm about to start digging all this stuff off and clean it up and get ready to cut the housing. So uh, diving in right now. So now that I got all the brake hardware removed, I went ahead and removed the uh, axle seal using uh, this seal puller. Um, this is where having the right uh, pullers and stuff to pull bearings and stuff out with really pays off. Uh, I used a two, uh, a two jaw puller and a whole lot of safety squinting and grunting to get it out, which is why I didn't film it. Uh, but I got the um, bearing pulled out of the housing. Uh, now it's time to pull the backing plate off and get ready to cut this uh, snout off the end of the housing. Um, Moser Engineering uh, has on the instruction sheet to cut this down to one eighth of an inch, but I did some measuring and with the backing plate, the way the backing plate is set up on this axle, uh, that one eighth of an inch isn't going to give me enough of the snout for the bearing to properly seat on, the uh, C-clip eliminator bearing is set up. So I'm going to do some measuring to make sure how much I actually have to cut off. It's going to be a little bit thicker than an eighth of an inch. So be sure before you cut this, to uh, measure 
the how much of it is going to stick inside of your C-clip eliminator so that you have enough of the snout sticking out to properly seat your C-clip eliminator so it'll properly seal and, and properly locate the uh, back side of the C-clip eliminator. So I'm going to do the finish I'm measuring up on it and then I'm going to pull the back and plate off of it and then uh, cut this snout off of here and get ready to uh, reverse the process and install all the parts. So getting after it now. So after I got this housing cut down and I made sure it's the proper depth to fit in the back of the C-clip eliminator, went ahead and deburred it and cleaned it up, made sure it had a good seat for the eliminator to ride on. After that I had some personal things come up and wasn't able to uh, be out here and working on the truck while I was filming. So I had just, just a little bit of time to do a bit of tinkering and then I had to get back out and I go do something else. Um, I had some issues also with uh, my axle shaft sliding into the uh, driver's side of the locker. Uh, I remedied the situation. Had to do some tankering to the locker to get everything working. Um, but between doing that and just not having really time to come out here, I didn't get to film me actually putting the stuff together. So instead of being able to show it to y'all, I'm gonna tell y'all the steps I took to get to this point here. So I have a couple pictures I'm gonna show you right now. So on those pictures, you can see that I had the housing all cleaned up and the backing plate on. What I was doing is lining everything up, making sure that it would all seat properly. Uh, once I did all that, I pulled the axle shaft back out of it and I went ahead and I put a, a good thick bead of silicone between the backing plate and the housing. These C-clip eliminators are known for leaking, so make sure that you do a really good job, put a good, a good thick bead of silicone um, between the backing plate and the housing and then from the uh, C-clip eliminator to the housing and backing plate on the front side. That way it, it uh, make a good seal, uh, try to stop, stop any chance for leaks on it. So once I got the silicone between the backing plate and the housing, I actually used zip ties through the holes where the uh, uh, brake shoe locator pins go. I took zip ties and run back to the U-bolts uh, and I made sure that pull good and tight and square. And as the uh, silicone was tacking up on that, I ran a good thick bead around the uh, front side of the backing plate and the uh, housing and then slide the axle shaft in and was able to uh, go ahead and torque down the uh, bolts to uh, 40 foot pounds by uh, Moser's instructions. So once I got to that point, you can see what it looks like right here. So after I got the axle shaft bolted on and everything was looking good, I went ahead and started putting the brakes on. Uh, one thing I wanna tell you before putting these brakes on, make sure before you take them apart, take a picture of the brakes. That way, if you have a situation come up like I did where I was took stuff apart and wasn't able to get right back on it and put stuff back together, make sure that you take pictures. That way you can see where every spring goes, all the clips, everything for these drum brakes, especially if you don't do it very often. Save you a whole lot of headaches, save you a whole lot of head scratching trying to put the brakes back on. But uh, I was able to get the brakes put on, line everything up. Just took me a little bit of time to, to get everything lined up. There is a uh, spreader bar that goes between the shoes up here on top. And on mine, it just took a very slight kink to get the spreader bar to, uh, to miss the C-clip eliminator. But uh, everything lined up and the brake shoes and all worked just as factory. And everything lines up depth wise. So these axle shafts are pretty much a, a basically a direct factory replacement style shaft as far as the dimensions go, other than the uh, having to cut the housing down for the C-clip eliminator. So for anybody that's got, got some 
Got some power tools, has a little bit of skill. It's a really good upgrade to go to these. So and you can get, you can do this upgrade in an in afternoon if you really get with it. Um, take a, dedicate a good, a good weekend to make sure you get everything done. But uh, after I got all the brakes put on, now it's time for me to uh, put the uh, brake drum on, go ahead and put the wheel and tire on. So I'm gonna do that right now. So now I got the wheel and tire bolted onto the axle. I want to tell y'all one little thing about these wheels. I get a lot of people ask me questions about what kind of wheels these are. Um, these are a Bassett brand, uh, round track, circle track style uh, racing wheel. I bought them from Speedway Motors. Uh, they're a 15 by eight inch wheel. And one thing special about them is they take a different style lug nut than uh, most of your regular aftermarket or factory style wheels. So make sure that if you're gonna buy these wheels from, from Speedway, make sure and ask them about the lug nuts. Uh, so that you get the right lug nuts, you don't lose a wheel and tire. Uh, so as you can see, I got my cow tracks in the background and got my big fancy uh, Moser axle shafts and my uh, drag radials. Can't wait to put this truck on the road and see what it's gonna do with all these upgrades on it. So now I'm about to move to the back of the truck. So as you can see, I have my diff cover already installed and I got it filled full of gear oil. So this axle build is complete. Um, this C-clip eliminator setup is uh, pretty simple to install. Uh, the hardest part is going to be um, cutting the end of the housing to fit the C-clip eliminator on, as well as pulling the uh, original axle bearings out of the end of the housing. So as long as you can get that, that part done, the rest of it is basically doing a brake job and um, pulling the uh, C-clip out of the carrier. So it's not really hard to do and most people can get it done in a weekend uh, if you take your time and, and just make sure that you do all the steps and get it all, all lined up, cut square and a good silicone put on the uh, um, C-clip eliminator, then uh, you'll have a good setup. Uh, I really do recommend um, these C-clip eliminators to anybody that's gonna be putting some power to, the, to these 10 bolts or 12 bolts um, because the factory axle shafts are really weak so if you're looking to put any kind of horsepower to one of these rear ends, I really recommend upgrading to these because it's not hard to do. Yes, it costs a little bit of money to get the, to buy the C-clip eliminators and axle shafts, but uh, really does make the rear end a lot stronger. And uh, I can't wait to get this truck, all the other upgrades done on the truck and uh, start testing out these axle shafts. So I hope this video was helpful for y'all. And I hope y'all check out the other videos that I've made of me building this entire 10 bolt. I have several videos I'm breaking down each part of the build as I went from tearing, down, tearing it down in the beginning all the way to installing the ring and pinion to installing my locker and installing the axle shafts. So be sure to check out my page. Uh, like and subscribe at the bottom of the page and check out the other, other uh, build videos so that if you wanna build one of these axles, um, you can see how I built mine and maybe it'll help you uh, take the steps to build your axle. So uh, make sure you like and subscribe to the bottom of the page and keep on coming back for more here at Alicat Customs. Mm -hmm.